Here in Germany, Interior Minister Nancy Faeser has banned a magazine she described as a central mouthpiece of the right-wing extremist scene. It incites hatred against Jews and immigrants. The magazine, Compact, is known for its provocative covers like this one depicting former Chancellor Angela Merkel in a hijab and spreading conspiracy theories about a covert plan to turn Germany into a Muslim-majority country. Police have raided the outlet's premises near Berlin as well as the homes of managers and shareholders who maintain contacts with important figures of Germany's far right. Raids also took place in several states and an affiliated production company has been banned. Let's take a closer look at this with DW's political correspondent Matthew Moore. Tell us more about this magazine, first of all. Compact is basically one of the leading media brands on the far right in Germany, on the new right-wing extremist scene. And essentially it pushes an anti-immigrant, anti-American, pro-Russian, ethno-nationalist um, ideology. Um, it's a magazine that can be picked up at train stations, at kiosks around the country, and apparently the intelligence services say they, they sell around 40,000 copies every edition, but also has a really strong YouTube channel, a Telegram channel, 350,000 um, subscribers on YouTube. So a kind of bird, a, a blossoming media company on the far right. And as of today, it's been, it will now be a criminal offence, Ben, to associate or to continue that work. The Interior Minister said it was a blow against the far right. So he basically said that they were inciting hatred against Jews, migrants, refugees, and contributing to the destabilisation of German democracy. How does this fit in with Germany's freedom of the press and freedom of speech laws? Mm, yeah, because free speech is anchored in the basic law, Germany's constitution, and essentially you're free in Germany to voice really unpalatable views, mm -hmm. racism, anti-Semitism, as long as you do not incite people to violence or talk about overthrowing the violent overthrow of German democracy. And now the security services in Germany have been monitoring this, this media company for some time and they say this morning that they've got enough evidence that they've crossed the line that they do veer into violent overthrow fantasies. Now, it will be interesting to see because the people involved in this raid, there was no arrest today. Mm -hmm. But going forward, there could be arrests if they continue the work, but they will, it'll be interesting to see whether they appeal this decision, the Interior Ministry's decision, in front of the courts. Do you expect any political consequences or ramifications or results from this? Well, I, you know, I follow the far-right alternative for Germany, and when I'm at their gatherings, I see compact journalists there, um, and they're, they're welcome, basically, at those political gatherings. The AFD leaders give them interviews. And so it will be interesting for me to see what the AFD does now as it tries to basically professionalise itself ahead of big elections. Does it, does it distance itself from this quite influential media company on the far, far right of the party? Or does it stick by them and say that this is, again, an attack on free speech, again, an attack on democracy? But it really does go to show this growing concern about the far right in Germany. Matthew Moore, thank you very much for coming in and explaining that story for us.